Hello, my beautiful planty people, and how are you doing today? I hope you are wonderful. I'm doing great. Another day full of energy. <laughs> um, it was really crappy out this morning, but now the sun is shining, so I am a happy gal. So, first of all, oh, first of all, I should say hello. Hello. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Nikki and this is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And for all of my sick, twisted gluttons for punishment who keep coming back for more, thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it so much. Um, okay, so first things first, I would like to say thank you so incredibly much for all of the love on my Philodendra Collection Part 1 video. Um, <clears throat> I was not expecting that much love on that video and uh, you guys really pulled through. You guys are some serious philodendron addicts. Um, so who am I to disappoint because today we are going to do philodendron collection part two. Um, I have at least one more after this. <laughs> I honestly didn't realize I had as many philodendrons as I do, but it makes sense because they're my favorite genus. I can say that with a lot of confidence. <laughs> Anyway, so without further ado, here's uh, Philodendron Collection, part two. <laughs> Rhyme that is so funny to me. Okay, lots to show you today. I'm going to try to keep it short-ish. I eventually have to pick up my children from school. So hopefully this won't be too, too long. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in. So I've got some small ones here that I will go ahead and show you first and then we will move up to some big boys. So the first one that I wanna show you is this little cutie. So this is my Philodendron 69686. And uh, so I got this one a few months ago. Uh, when I got it, it had about five or six leaves, however, it really didn't acclimate overly well and I lost all but two leaves. So these two leaves are the ones that stayed. Let me just show you there. There's one and two. And um, eventually it sorted its stuff out and then it just recently put out this little leaf here and we have another one on the way. So it looks like this plant has started acclimating. Um, so when these plants get big, this is what they look like. They're really cool. I just love the look of them. And I don't have anything in my collection currently that looks like that. So I was really, really happy to get my hands on this guy because I just find them so interesting looking. Um, so I'm really looking forward to him growing and getting better and getting those cute little lobes. Anyway, so that is plant number one for today, my Philodendron 69686. Okay, the second one I have to show you is kind of more of a common Philodendron, but harder to find, if that makes any sense. So this is my Philodendron Rio. Uh, so let me get him up close and show you there some of the leaves. That's uh, a newer one, so it's kind of harder to see the pattern on but hold on oh my goodness work it out so this plant is uh, very similar to a philodendron brazil however instead of that really bright like um, yellow color these ones have more of a cream variegation really really pretty um, their leaves tend to be a little bit more narrow and long as opposed to the Brazil that um, has a little bit more of a round leaf. They still have like the point to them, but these guys tend to have longer tight leaves. So it took me a while to get my hands on this guy. Now from what I understand, from what I've read, uh, the reason that we, ha we are having a hard time finding them up here in Canada is because um, this particular uh, cultivar was actually created by um it was a big grower down in the states and now i'm now i can't i'm blanking on who it was oh no <laughs> i don't remember i'll see if i can find it and i'll put it on the screen but anyway so i'll show you as i always do a, a picture of what a more full plant would look like but they're really pretty. I absolutely love my trailing philodendrons. My Brazil, I have a couple of them and they're beautiful. And so I really wanted to get my hands on this guy. So like, you know, 
I had more of them. <laughs> so that is plant number two, my philodendron Rio. She cute. Okay, the next plant that I want to show you is one that I just potted up into soil uh, recently and I did that in a video with you guys, um, just potting up propagations, I think I called it, or something like that. So this is a plant that I got in a trade from Lucia Lulu's Leaves. Um, she is another Canadian YouTuber, uh, just a couple hours away from me, which is nice. Uh, but this is a philodendron snowdrift. So these are really, really cool plants. You don't see them overly often. Um, I think they're, they're just kind of starting to come into their own, but they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, so let me show you. This is its most recent leaf. So these leaves come out uh, white with this really speckled pattern um, and then they kind of over time fade to a green and then so this might get a little bit darker but you can see it has some chunky variegation. I'm not sure how easy that is to see right here um, but they're really really pretty and the cool thing about these as well is the backs of the leaves. So the stems come in this very pink and then over time they fade to more of a green. Um, so here's what this plant looks like when it gets a little bit bigger. So these are uh, a juvenile, uh, sorry, a mature plant, but new leaves. So this is what they look like when the leaves first come out when this plant gets a little bit bigger. I know, you got a little drool there. Just, can you, yeah, you got it, okay. Um, and then this is what they look like after those uh, beautiful white leaves harden off. They are just a beautiful plant. I love the scalloped leaves. It's just gorgeous. So uh, I'm really glad that this guy has some really great roots now and is growing really well because I can't wait until it gets humongous. <laughs> so that is plant number three, my philodendron snowdrift. Too pretty. Okay, the next philodendron is one that really wasn't on my radar at all. Uh, like I, I knew about it, but it wasn't one that I like was seeking out or anything like that. And then I happened to get a cutting from my wonderful plant fairy godmother Paula. And oh my goodness, the, if you don't have one or you haven't seen one in person, um, just photos of them don't do them any justice at all. And so I'm about to show you is not gonna do it justice. But this is a philodendron silver sword. So these leaves are very, very silvery and beautiful. So they tend to have a little bit darker in the middle, kind of reminiscent of um, like a moonlight, but not quite as obvious. But this, it's it's just the softest sagey silvery blue I don't even know they're just so nice um, grows rather quickly um, I potted it up into soil and uh, after it grew some nice roots and it has just been spitting leaf after leaf after leaf out ever since so beautiful plant um, highly recommend I haven't had an ounce of issue with this one. It's super easy to take care of. They are climbers, so if you do give these guys a pull, they will climb. Um, it's not overly picky as far as humidity is concerned. It's quite happy in you know 45 to 50% humidity. But again, as I always say, they are tropical plants and they will always do better and thrive more when they are in a higher humidity setting, you know, around 60%. Um, but they're completely happy without that and they will do just fine. So that is plant number four. Plant number four, my philodendron silver sword. Okay, let's move on to a plant that's stressing me out. So this, <laughs> so sad. This is my philodendron brantianum. So the thing with this one, it wasn't growing very much at all. So I was like, okay, I'll fix your wagon. I'll put you on a pole and then you'll like that and then you'll grow faster. Okay, so yes, that worked. Um, however, it grew really quickly and now it's off the top of this pole and it's back to putting out tiny leaves. <laughs> I can't win. Anywho. This one I am also having some difficulty with um, 
the same difficulty that I'm having with my melanocrysum, where when the new leaves are starting to come out, the petiole pushes through the leaf, which is such a pain. Um, it ruined this little leaf here, if you can see that. And this little leaf came out all weird. Like, like I'm almost at the point where I just want to say forget about it, but I am way too stubborn. So we're going to keep at this little guy. I think I might chop him down, uh, get him a bigger pole. I just, I see all these Brantianums that, um, like a lot of you guys have in the States and they have these big, beautiful, like hand sized leaves. And I look at mine and I'm like, well, girl, you said anyways. That's really all I want to say about this guy because he's really frustrating me. But we will make it work. We will figure it out because I really love the leaves. Um, let me show you. This is what they look like when they get bigger. Um, if I can ever get there. This is about the closest leaf to um, what they normally look like. But only like on a larger scale. Um, but we will get there someday. Uh, like I said, I'm just too stubborn not to. So that is my philodendron brantanum. Okay, the next one I'm really excited to show you. This is one that I got semi-recently, I would say maybe two or three months ago. And it's one that I have had my eye on for a while, but couldn't track down. Uh, so I ended up doing a trade for this plant and another one that I will show you a bit later um, for a cutting of my ginormous philodendron Florida Beauty. Um, really happy but it was really difficult to cut that beauty but I'm really happy with the trades that I got um, for it so this is my gorgeous beautiful philodendron Jose Bono and I have named him Enrique so his name is Enrique um, absolutely beautiful so it came with these two leaves and these two green leaves here and then it put out this gorgeous thing and it is currently unfurling, let me see if I can, that leaf right there, which is going to be beautiful. Look at that. It's just, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so pretty. I absolutely love this plant. Fun fact, this plant grows incredibly quickly um, and it does get extremely large. Uh, so, as pretty as you might find it, um, if you are going to pick one up, keep in mind they do get really big. Um, the leaves will get like massive. So let me go ahead and insert a photo of what these look like when they get more mature. They're stunning plants, but they do get large. So if you're not a large plant kind of person or if you just don't have the space, maybe get one if you really want one. And then um, you can always like give it to a friend or cut it down or share it with people, you know, whatever. Anyway, gorgeous plant, super happy. These guys are also climbers, so I will be giving this guy a pole here soon. Um, and he can go ahead and just grow until his little heart is content. But yeah, so that is my philodendron, Jose Buono, and his name is Enrique. Uh, so this is what I got from You Grow Glen Coco. Um, ways back now and it's a really cool little philodendron so this is called a philodendron <laughs> angustiolatum i think that's it <laughs> anyway um really cool plant they get these long lance type leaves and the older they get, they get this more rippling. So here is what a mature version or a more mature version looks like. They're really pretty, uh, really, really fast growing, a very, very easy plant to take care of. Um, this plant does not require a whole lot from me. What I will say if you do get one of these is you wanna get it um, on a pole sooner rather than later uh, because they will become a little top heavy and kind of flop a little bit. So currently I just have this one up with this little stick. I do need to get it on a moss pole. Um, but the care on these guys is really, really easy. They don't require high humidity. Um, they're really not picky with watering. These guys are really good in that they will let you know when they need watering. So the leaves will just kind of droop a little bit and you're like, oh, needs water. And then they just perk right back up. There's no like lasting effects to letting it dry out too much or anything like that. 
Um, really, really sturdy, rewarding little philodendron. So I'm looking forward to this guy getting big because the leaves just look so cool when they get large. Um, so yeah, that is my next plant, my philodendron and gustialatum. I'll try to put it on the screen just to be helpful. Okay, the next plant that I'm going to show you is uh, kind of one that I showed you already, but not really. Does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense at all, actually. Uh, so it is this guy. So this, <laughs> although you may not believe me, is my philodendron, my variegated philodendron bilitae. Now, if you've been around for a little bit, you will know that I struggled with this guy hardcore and it was not throwing out any variegated growth at all. So I actually chopped this guy right down. You saw it in my last philodendron video. Um, no, you didn't. You saw it in my propagation updates video, um, but you will see my variegated one probably in the next video. So make sure you watch for that because I'm sure it will be growing even more at that point. Um, but this is the original plant and um, right down here is where I chopped off the variegated part. So basically at this point, it is just a green um, bilitae and yes, before anybody goes down the comments and goes, it's bilietier, I know, but I call it a bilitae, so you know, it is what it is. Um, Anywho, I have kept this plant, however, because I am hopeful there is still variegation in the plant. So I am hoping and praying that eventually I will get another variegated leaf. We do have a new one here that is on the way out. So, I mean, the potential is there that it could be variegated, but that remains to be seen. Right now, it's just a small green philodendron bilitae. <laughs> Now, I have another philodendron bilitae that I will show you at the end of this video, and she is humongous. So make sure you keep watching, <laughs> because she's worth a peek. You guys haven't seen her in a while, but she's huge. Anyway, so that is my non-variegated, variegated philodendron bilietier. Okay. The next one that I want to show you is this really cool little gal right here. So this is my, oh, how am I going to put you so that it, not there. <laughs> anyway, this is my philodendron tortum. So this is a really cool, unique philodendron in that it has these like, they're almost like frond like leaves. I'll try to get you in close so you can see them here. You like. So they kind of resemble a fern in a way or like a palm even, uh, but they get these big frond like leaves and they're just really cool. They're very tropical looking, um, just really fun to have in your home. And they kind of, they don't look like everything else. Um, when we normally think of philodendrons, this is not the first plant that kind of comes to mind. So I bought this guy as just a little guy. He was about down to here and they grow quite quickly. Um, and their fronds get rather large quickly. So here is a photo of what these guys look like when they get um, more mature and they're just beautiful. So to have them in a corner with their beautiful flopping fronds or leaves, I guess, um, they just really make a statement. So I really enjoy having this guy because it just breaks up that normal philodendron heart shape leaf look. Not that I don't love that look. I mean, you know I do. Um, so this guy's really easy to take care of. It is a climber. You can see right now I just have it uh, staked on this little bamboo post. However, it definitely, definitely needs a moss pole or something a little bit more sturdy to climb up. Uh, it will dig in its uh, aerial roots and just kind of go crazy. Um, and they do tend to flop, so you definitely do want to support this guy. Um, it is not picky in regards to humidity. It's really, really easy to take care of. I haven't had an ounce of issue with this guy. So, you know, 45 to 50% humidity will be completely fine for this guy. It's not like a fern in that regard where the leaves are small, so they require more humidity. It's not the case with this guy, which is really nice. So you kind of get that fern look with the, you know, more hardy philodendron care. So it's an overall great plant. I absolutely love it. Highly recommend them. Um, 
Yeah, especially if you're looking for some different textures and that kind of stuff in your collection. This guy is a great candidate for that. So that is my philodendron tortum. Okay. The next one I want to show you is such a cute little plant. I love this guy. So this one I got in a trade. Um, it was another one that I got in a trade with John from uh, John Sutherland here on YouTube. And this is a philodendron campos, campos partuanum. And they have the most beautiful leaves. Look at the color. It's kind of Mikan's-esque. Uh, but then they start to develop. You can see on this older leaf here. So I did chop this guy. I have three propagations in my Mars Hydro Grow Tent. Um, but they start to develop these little lobes once they get a little bit bigger. And then, oddly enough, it actually grows out of those little lobes and grows back into like this type shape. Um, but they're stunning plants. So here is a picture of what they look like when they get a little bit more mature. They're so beautiful. They have this almost like iridescent look to them and I'm just like obsessed with it. They're gorgeous. And then here is a photo of what they look like when they actually get mature and they totally, it's one of those plants that completely morph from when it's really small and juvenile to when they get large and mature. Um, but it is a beautiful plant nonetheless. Now these guys are definitely climbers. You can see that we do have aerial roots on this one and it just wants to reach out and grab somebody. <laughs> so this was another one that I definitely have to get on a moss pole soon. Um, it also grows incredibly quickly. What I also have found out about this plant is it really likes a lot of light. Um, this guy grows directly towards my light bulb and like sits right under the light bulb and it actually doesn't burn. I think that's probably um, what's attributed to this gorgeous color. Um, so definitely don't be shy about the light with these guys. Obviously with anything, uh, when you first get it, you want to bump it up slowly. You don't want to just like go, ah, there's all the light because you'll probably have problems with that. Um, other than that though, so lots of light. It grows really fast. I'm quite impressed. It propagates really easily. Uh, so like most philodendrons cut below the node. Um, mine I propagated in... Um, <laughs> sphagnum moss and they're all growing wonderfully so beautiful beautiful little plant highly recommend super easy and absolutely gorgeous leaves so that is my philodendron campos partuanum or if you really get stumbled on that because it's way too long of a name you can just call it a philodendron campo which you may have heard them referred to as that so anyway that is that one let's go ahead and move on to a big boy okay i had to back you up for this one so i'm gonna try to put it on my lap here hold on Oi. okay <laughs> this is my philodendron florida beauty um and she's a stunner. So this is basically a variegated uh, philodendron pedatum, um, but they have been named philodendron Florida Beauty. They are stunning plants. They get these massive, I can't get her too close, but hopefully you can see that. Uh, they get these massive leaves, these gorgeous half moon leaves. <laughs> um, I, there's more leaves on this side, but I just, I, she's big. Um, so this is the one that I chopped down and I shared a four leaf node with Chloe and I traded for uh, Enrique, my Jose Bono, and another plant that I will show you probably in the next video because this one's starting to get long and I still have about four plants to show you. Um, anyway, these are an absolutely stunning philodendron. Um, these leaves will get really, really large. The variegation pattern varies. You'll get, you know, these half moon leaves and this one with a more like uh, marbly or mottled kind of look. Um, they're just beautiful. Um, they're also extremely easy to take care of. Uh, I am going to do like my top 10 easy rare plants um, and show you guys, but this guy would definitely be um, on that list. Um, it grows 
really quickly when you don't cut it. <laughs> I am waiting on this little teeny tiny node here to shoot out. It is getting there, um, but it's taking its time. I think it's just recuperating from being cut, but in any case, uh, highly recommend this plant. I know that this year they are a little bit more difficult to get your hands on. There were a lot of them around last year, um, but this year they seem to be a little bit more difficult. But if you can get one, I highly recommend doing so. I think it's kind of obvious why. <laughs> But um, these guys are climbers as well. They are also one that really does like to dig the roots into the moss pole. So I do have this guy on a pole and they will get their roots right in there and just take off. So anywho, um, oh, as far as like humidity and stuff, super easy in that regard as well. Does not require crazy high humidity. It's completely happy around 50%, even probably as low as 45%. Um, yeah, and that's that's about all I have to say about this guy. It's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. I love her so incredibly much. I've had this one for a little over a year, and she has been one of my uh, favorite philodendrons the whole way along as far as beauty and as far as ease of growth and care. So that is my philodendron Florida Beauty. Okay, on to my third last plant. This is also... A pretty big one <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to get her down on my lap here hold on oh come here baby okay so this is my philodendron mammae um, so these guys are absolutely beautiful I'll try and get you a closer shot I can't get them too close right now um, but they have these beautiful silvery markings on their leaves and they get this um, like ripply heart shaped leaf and the cool part about these as well is they get these ripply petioles and I'll insert a shot here of what the petioles look like so how you can kind of differentiate the mammae between some of the other similar look philodendrons is the petiole so they have little ripples and they're flat as opposed to like a round petiole these guys are flat and then rippled on the sides um, they're just a really cool plant very fast growing um, I mean these leaves are just stunning they have that beautiful um, mottled silver on them um, kind of reminiscent of a soderoi, but not quite as silvery. Um, this is another one that has been quite easy to take care of. I would say a little bit more difficult than the beauty. Um, and this is also one that tends to grow secondary plants, um, similar to how you would see like um, an Eglonema or a Diffenbachia. They shoot out rhizomes and then come up. Uh, this one has actually thrown out two additional plants so there's actually three plants in this pot now um, so come springtime I definitely will be repotting this into a bigger pot and she's gonna have to go into like a floor pot at that point um, they are climbers but they have a very like sporadic they don't just climb straight up like they're all over the map um, so keep that in mind as well. I have started to almost wind my stem around this moss pole uh, because they are a little, they're a little crazy. <laughs> anyway, other than that, beautiful plant. And uh, I definitely highly recommend these guys. Uh, like I said, they're really fast growers and uh, extremely rewarding in that regard. And just so beautiful. I can't get enough of these big, beautiful leaves. <laughs> Okay, so that is the third last plant of my philodendron mammae. Let's move on to another beauty that you are going to obsess over. Okay, the second last plant that I want to show you is this gorgeous gal here. Um, she's a big lady. So this was uh, the top cutting when I did my philodendron glorious propagation video. This was the top cutting that I am keeping for my personal collection. Um, and she's done so well. I definitely am going to need to up pot her probably sooner rather than later. Um, so when I cut her, she had this leaf and then this leaf right here. They're both so beautiful. And this leaf right here, if I can get her out, was just in the process of um, coming out of its sheath when I cut it. 
And so it opened a little bit smaller, but that's as expected. Uh, the leaves will kind of grow to the size of your root mass. So once you cut a plant, expect that it's going to put out smaller leaves for um, maybe one or two, if not more, before they start getting the size that they were. So this guy has now started to put out another leaf. So this is the newest leaf here which will be unfurling very shortly. So they come out this beautiful pink color, really, really pretty. And then they will obviously fade to green. Oh my goodness. It's hard to fit her in the shot, she's so big. Um, we'll just put her back down here. Um, anyway, they're really beautiful plants. They do get extremely large um, and they get extremely large rather quickly. So if you don't have uh, a spot for one, um, maybe admire them from afar, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but their leaves will get really, really big. They are also uh, crawlers as opposed to climbers. So the other plants that I've been showing you are climbers, so if you put them on a moss pole, they will climb up the pole and attach themselves. Uh, a gloriosum is a crawler, so the um, stolen or the stem bleh, will crawl along and then it will build roots down into the soil as it crawls along. Um, so the tricky part that a lot of people run into with these guys is that you need to find a pot that's quite wide. Um, otherwise it grows over the side and will eventually just pull the whole pot over. But um, if you've got a pot big enough and if you have a space big enough for these guys, they make beautiful plants. Um, they can be a little bit tricky at times. Um, I would say they probably require a little bit more humidity. I would say at least probably 55% would be, um, I probably wouldn't go too much lower than that. I mean, they can, um, they can take dips in humidity down to like 40, 45%, but I definitely wouldn't be a spot where I would keep, um, this particular philodendron at. Um, I think that's pretty much all I had to say, but they are definitely a beautiful plant. They are big and velvety and that veining is just stunning and they just really, really make a statement. They're gorgeous. Okay, let's move on to, um, actually, I'll show you two more. Two more is all you get today and then I gotta go pick up my kids. Okay, okay. I had to back up a little bit because she's a big girl. So this, is my philodendron billetier. Um, wait. She desperately needs a repot, um, so I'll probably do that in the spring. But she's got some massive, huge leaves here. Um, this, let me turn her around. Oh, goodness. Uh, oh my. So this is her newest leaf. It's just starting to harden off now. Um, look at those big long lobes. They are just beautiful and she's super long. <laughs> just gorgeous. Um, this is a beautiful plant. This for a very long time has been one of my favorite philodendrons. Um, <laughs> she just will not be contained. I'm going to move her down there. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> This for a very long time has been one of my favorite philodendrons. Um, they grow really fast, at least in my opinion. Uh, they do have times where they will slow down a bit, um, but the leaves are just gorgeous. They get super long. Now they will get substantially longer than this. Um, they kind of give you that Spirit of Sancti vibe if you've seen what they look like. Um, they are climbers. So this guy, when I repot it, I will go ahead and put it on a moss pole and all of these aerial roots, you can see here and here, will grab on and um, go ahead and she'll climb that way. Now, what I will say, let me just set her down. Oh, girl. Uh, what I will say about these plants, pardon, let me just get, okay. Oh boy. Are you just gonna, okay. What I will say about these plants is they take up a, a fair footprint because of how they grow. So they kind of grow, let me turn you a little. 
so you can see. So they kind of grow out a little. Now you can kind of um, put a little uh, like brace on them and hold them up, um, which I probably should have done. But I think she looks cool, all kind of wild and crazy. Um, they are so such an easy plant to care for. Um, this one sits up on top of one of my Ikea shelves and um, if you guys have been around a while you know that anything that is on the top of any of my shelf tends to get forgotten a lot. Um, so they respond really well um, and they snap back really well from underwatering and they don't throw a fit. Um, I definitely wouldn't overwater them. Um, I mean, root rot, so we just tend to not do that anyways, but um, they are really good about being underwatered. She doesn't give me an ounce of issue. This is another plant that also is uh, seems to be a little more resistant to pests than a lot of my other philodendrons. And um, she's just a generally overall amazing plant and I love her to bits. So it's gonna be really interesting in the spring when I repot this guy and get her on a big pole, I imagine. I've do have some small roots coming at the bottom right now. Um, so by springtime, she will definitely, definitely be in need of a bigger pot and a nice big moss pole. Um, yeah, so that's really all I have to say about her. She is beautiful, she's gorgeous. I love her so much. And if you don't have one, go get yourself one because they are definitely worth it. Just a little crazy. Just, just a little, just a little crazy but stunning nonetheless. Okay, let's move on to the last plant for this video because like I said, I need to go get my kids. So the last plant that I wanted to show you today is this gorgeous thing. So this is my beautiful Philodendron Gigantium variegata. So this is a variegated Philodendron Gigantium. And as the name suggests, these plants get gigantic. Uh, so here is a picture of what they look like when they get uh, more mature. The leaves are just humongous. Where am I going to put it when it gets humongous, you ask? I have no freaking idea, but I will work it out because they are just that beautiful. Um, so as you can see, I'll try to get you up close to the leaves here. They have this gorgeous mottled kind of variegation. Um, we have a new leaf that's unfurling right now. And these guys are also extremely fast growers. Um, so I haven't had this plant an overly long time, um, maybe two months. And it has already put out three leaves in my care, which is crazy. Um, let me turn it around so you can see that leaf there. <laughs> um, really a beautiful plant, um, but definitely um, invest in one if you have a large space to put it in or you know you would expect that you may have to you know trade it for a smaller one at some point if you really want this look but just don't have the space um, but they are absolutely beautiful I am so happy to have found this guy it was kind of a wish list plant and just happy with her just generally happy with her Anyway, I will go ahead and wrap it up today. That is the last philodendron I wanted to show you for today. Um, the third installment will probably be out next week. I'm not entirely sure when, um, but there are some beautiful philodendrons on that list as well. Some beautiful hearts and loveliness. <laughs> anyway, Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as you liked part one of my philodendron collection. If you are still here, go ahead and put one of those little blue hearts um, just to kind of say hi and let me know you're still hanging out and you've made it through all of my plant philodendron ramblings. Uh, that would be so amazing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I would like to thank you all so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. It would be a huge help to my channel and I really would appreciate it. I would really like to get to 10K by February 1st because that was kind of the goal that I made for myself and you know, <laughs> I don't like not completing goals. I know it's one that's probably just like way out of the scope of like things that are possible, but okay, stop rambling. 
Okay, Blue Heart, thank you so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> I love you guys all to bitty bits, and I would like you all to have an amazing and wonderful day, night, week, month, and year, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah!